OK, here's the equipment that we're going to use for this experiment. First of all, this is the current balance board. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about how it's hooked up. We've got a ruler so that we can measure the length of the wires where they're in parallel. We've got a set of milligram weights. There should be 15 in here and a pair of tweezers. And the idea is that you'll use the tweezers to pick up one of these milligram weights and put it on the little, little pan to hold the weights here. I'll get into that in more detail. We've got a caliper with a vernier scale here. I'll explain how that works. And we can use that to measure the diameter of the wires. And we'll also use it to measure the spacing between the wires. And I'll go into more detail about that. Now, the, the current uh, balance board actually has two wires. This is the balance part. Here's the fixed wire. And we've got leads going into it. You'll notice these are the jumpers or the, the cable, the wires that we use in lab, but there are two of them because we're going to be carrying a lot of current. So we've got a double wire coming in to carry the current. It goes through the first wire, and then it goes through this curly wire here to the support point. Can you see that? We'll get a closer view. This is the balance part of the wire. The, the current goes in here, goes out here to, this is the other parallel wire here, this part, front part. And then it comes back to the balance point and then exits at this position here, comes out another double wire so that we have a complete circuit. So just to go over that again, Current will come in, go through the bottom wire, go around, go up, go around through the top wire, and come back out. And back and forth, because we're using alternating current here, so there's not one direction. But when the current is going through here, the current in the bottom wire is going that way, the current in the top wire is going the other direction, and then it reverses. So they're always going backwards. Okay, over here, actually this is our power supply. It's called a Variac. It's a variable auto transformer. And we'll just plug it in to the, uh, to, the, to the wall. And it's got a knob here. And we can actually read the voltage. Let's us vary the voltage from 0 to 100. Oh, I'm going to turn it on. There's a fuse in case we can overdo it. And I don't know if you can see the, this. It's not that much important. But we can change the voltage. This dial just shows it's working. We're not going to use that for measurement. Okay. Turn that off, unplug it. Now that produces a high voltage, but we need a lot of current. So we have a separate transformer here. It's just wired to a cord so that it can plug into the Variac. And the transformer changes a high voltage with low current into a low voltage but with high current, a lower voltage. So what I'm going to do is connect these double wires into the center tap of the transformer. We only need to do this once to set it up. If you came into the lab, it might already be set up for you this way. But this way, you get to see how we set it up. So I'll get, there we go, that goes in there. And we'll tighten the screws. And now, <clears throat> and in fact, maybe we can see a demonstration of the effect. So I've balanced the balance. We'll look at it more later, but I've balanced the balance. I plug this in. I've got the current. High voltage comes out of the Variac, goes into the transformer, gets turned into high current. We may go up to about 15, 15 amps and goes around through the device. And so if I turn this on and turn the power up, can you see the force, the demonstration of the force between the wires? Yes, look, they're repelling each other. And it makes a nice hum. OK, let me turn that off. We need to measure this. So we need to measure how much current is going through the, these wires. And the way we'll do that is with this device. It's 
the Keithley Model 1685 AC Current Probe, but everybody calls it the Amp Clamp. And because it clamps onto the wires over there, and by measuring the magnetic field here by induction, it can tell how much current's going through without having to open up the wires. So that's a really nice thing about AC with the constantly changing uh, voltage. You have a constantly changing magnetic field that you can sense that. Now it's got three scales. It can go up to 200 amps, 20 amps, or 2 amps. And we may go up to 15 amps, so I'll set it on the 20 amp scale. And then it has a, a, a table here that shows input 2 amps, output 0.2 volts. Input 20 amps, output 2 volts. Input 200 amps, output 20 volts for use with AC DVM, digital voltmeter. So the idea is that we want to measure current, but we're actually going to plug this into a voltmeter. And when, when we read two volts on the voltmeter, this will be AC, then that'll need 20 amps. So the basic rule is measure the voltage and divide by 10 to get the current. So the way this is hooked up, here's where we're going to use the digital voltmeter we've already used. And we'll plug this into common and voltage. Remember, we're measuring current, but we're actually going to measure voltage. And I'll turn this over to up to the 2-volt scale. The twiddles on the top indicate that this is AC. And we should never go over 2 volts, because that's 20 amps, and that's going to make the wires get a little too hot. We don't want to do that. So. That's how we'll measure the current, and then the amp clamp, you can see we'll take the wires that carry the, carry the current through the wires. We'll just put the amp clamp so that the wires go through here. And now we're set up to measure the current through the wires by measuring the voltage from the amp clamp. Okay, what else have we got here? When the, the wires repel, they go up, and we don't know the distance between them. We're going to add weight onto the top wire and push it back down to exactly the same height it was before. And the way we can do that with precision is we have a mirror mounted here on the balance part. And we're going to take this laser. This is an, an old helium neon laser, actually. This is probably about as powerful as a laser pointer nowadays. but. Um, and we'll put it at the end of the table, and we'll shine the laser down onto the mirror and bounce it back, and we'll put it up on a stand. Actually, that's what this part is here. It's just a, a little cardboard stand with a piece of paper. When we get everything set up, we'll put a mark, we'll put the laser, we'll, sit, we'll make a mark on, or the, the laser will have a dot on the, on the stand, and we'll mark where that is. And then what we'll do is when we increase the current, the laser beam will go up and we put on weight and that'll push it back down and we'll tune it so that the current, the force upward from the, the, the current matches the extra weight downward and when the dot comes exactly back to where we marked it, then we know that this is exactly back in the original position and the distance between the wires is exactly the same as it was when we started the experiment. So each time, we'll raise the current a little bit, the dot will go up, we'll add some weight, it'll go down, and then we'll adjust the current to match the weight. The force down equals the force up. And once we get this tuned so that the dot is on the laser is back where it, where it started, um, we'll know the distance here is the same. We want to keep that constant. And we'll know the force because it's equal to the weight of this, how much weight we've put on. Don't forget to take the mass. These are milligram weights. Don't forget to take the mass and multiply by G. Well, we have a little wooden shim that goes under the laser to point it upward. And that's all the equipment we're going to use for this experiment. And I'll set it up, and then you'll get to see how, it, how it's laid out.